And if you can't, you're just literally lying to yourself or not watching. So here's the plans for selling and making money on Caleb Williams. You guys need to really pay attention to this segment right here. Caleb Williams is a guy that everybody seems to have a vendetta against for whatever reason, whether it's because he painted his nails, posed for GQ wearing a dress, everybody out here in Tennessee hates those things, or whatever else you wanna come up with. He's a guy that there's not a lot of objective coverage on, and today there needs to be an adult in the room, a grown up in the room to say some uncomfortable but true things about Caleb Williams, and I'm going to tie it into his sports card market because that is what this channel covers. But basically, Caleb Williams, the easiest way that I can say this in the most simplest terms is that he is a sharp investor's biggest fantasy. What I mean by that is sharp and square in sports betting or just any betting or gambling out there in the world. Caleb Williams is a sharp's biggest fantasy. Some guy asked about Caleb Williams actually on the first video. Interested to hear your thoughts on Caleb Williams. He's looking like a bust, but the Bears have the worst coach and coordinator in the NFL, so it's hard to judge Caleb this early. So basically my answer to this guy's question is history repeats itself. That's the answer. You guys are quick to forget that history always repeats itself. I wanna come through some prominent number one picks here and draw all the parallels that I can. Caleb Williams is obviously in the class with these guys, you know, tall, prominent, number one picks who are generational type players. He's not in the loser Bryce Young category, a short guy that can't play, or the Kyler Murray category, a guy who really can play, but he's an anomaly just because he's so small, so good the way he moves. But the guys that I want to cover are is Jared Goff and Jeff Fisher in 2016. And by the way, I think Jared Goff sucks. I think he's going to lose for the Lions in a big game this year. But as a rookie, he also sucked with Jeff Fisher, and then he gets Sean McVay, and is very good. I remember back then, I was in cards back then, his optic autos were like $40, $60, and they ended up selling for three, dollars $400 that next year when Sean McVay came around. And then a more recent example, Trevor Lawrence and Urban Meyer in 2021, and I actually have some personal examples with these two. I was a young kid with when the Jared Goff thing was happening. I didn't have money to spend thousands of dollars on cards. But Trevor Lawrence and Urban, I bought a Contenders Auto for $2,200 and then sold it for $6,000 when he beat the Chargers in the playoffs going into that week where they ultimately lost to the Chiefs. But it's the same exact cycle with Caleb Williams and Matt Eberflus in 2024. It's the same parallel. It's the same cycle, guys. I don't know how much clearer I can make this sound. In 2021, all the idiots out there, all the stupid people, lapped up Mac Jones and Justin Fields cards, even Zach Wilson cards, and if you were smart, you bought Trevor Lawrence cards. What you guys need to do is, is I do think Caleb Williams is a generational player and he is going to be a good investment for the next 10, 15, 20 years, but what you need to do is, is you need to fall in like not fall in love. That's a good term for life and especially within cards because Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, Mac Jones were what people fell in love with immediately. But if you fell in like with Trevor Lawrence and sold him the next year and made your money the next year, you didn't have to fall in love with him and invest in him for five, 10, 15 years because his career isn't trending very well right now. I think that's mainly due to Jacksonville, but that's another story. But you made some money. In 2024, let the same idiots lap up the fragile, hobbly, wobbly Jaden Daniels, overpriced, his cards are all completely overpriced. He's very injury prone, he's very fragile, he's very overrated, and people are going to see about that one over time. I'm not saying to not grift money off of Jaden Daniels, but it's very clear and obvious that he's the next Robert Griffin III. I mean, their stats in their rookie year are literally almost the same. They're on the same team after all, and we're going to see how that one ages, but you don't want to fall into the Mac Jones of this year, which is Jaden Daniels. Here's what the slow people, all the really slow people in the real media and in this industry can't grasp. Caleb Williams is a winner and he is surrounded by the Bears, which are all losers. You guys saw the three game stretch that Caleb Williams had. He can play football in this league. The regression is coaching. It took him a few games to figure it out. He's really good. We go into a bye week and then it all falls apart. If they beat the commanders, which they should have, which Caleb had them in position to do, they're five and two and the season may be completely different. But now everybody's quit. The coach, I don't have to give any words on him. And then the failed offensive coordinator that Jackson Smith and Jigba roasted when the Bears hired him. I don't know what the Bears were doing hiring this guy, but I don't have to really go in depth here. They could have had Jim Harbaugh, Ben Johnson, or Cliff Kingsbury. Jim Harbaugh probably would have coached the Bears if they made a big offer to him in the offseason. 
Ben Johnson reportedly wanted the Bears head coaching job, and Cliff Kingsbury wanted to keep working with Caleb Williams for the offensive coordinator position, yet they refused to hire him. I don't know how you would let a Cliff Kingsbury leave the building without a contract signed and done. And I want to get on to some other guys. DJ Moore is probably the biggest loser on the entire team. I've been out on this guy and been on this since he took his helmet off and lost the game for the Carolina Panthers. He's a complete loser. He's a complete diva. He's what a lot of people say Caleb Williams is. Caleb Williams is a great teammate. Not this diva that everyone makes him out to be, but DJ Moore is that loser and that diva that everyone makes him out to be. I would have gotten rid of him at the trade deadline for honestly just whatever you could get. I mean, I think maybe the Chiefs might be the only place that he would fit in line because they're really the only bona fide culture right now that's not going to put up with his drama or his nonsense, but that's a whole nother story. Keenan Allen, another one, he's old, hurt, won't block. DJ Moore had a screen for a touchdown. Keenan Allen's guy broke through this weekend and therefore he gets pulled down in the backfield. Maybe DJ Moore should pout and go off the field and cry and complain about Keenan Allen not blocking for him as opposed to his young rookie quarterback that's completely unsupported and is not being helped at all. And then Romo Dunze has had some key drops. He's a rookie too. I'm a little bit more forgiving to him than I am these other two supposed star receivers. DJ Moore, guy's a complete loser. I can't emphasize that point enough. I want you to listen carefully to everyone who wanted Tyson Badgett this week, every last player that went to the GM or the coach and said, we want Tyson Badgett. They should all be gone. So AKA DJ Moore and whoever else went to the GM and did that just because these guys, I'm tired of people complaining. I'm really tired of losers quitting and complaining just in the world in general. A lot of people think they deserve things and want to quit and complain and do this, that, and the other, and it's really no different in professional football. So that would carry over to the Bears and the Colts' pathetic offensive line. I don't want to leave the Colts out of this. The offensive line apparently quit on Anthony Richardson, and guess what? I don't want to hear it. He's a young guy. He made a minor mistake sitting out of play. I still think Anthony Richardson can play, but he needs reps, but the Colts' O line won't block for him. He lost the locker room, blah, 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 blah. I honestly don't want to hear it. That's a whole nother story once again, but I'm tired of all these professional players that are getting paid millions, tens of millions of dollars to play a sport, quitting and complaining. Caleb Williams is on pace for the most sacks. Once again, it's literally all coaching. Chicago can't get the offensive line right. It took Buffalo, the Pittsburgh Steelers, almost a decade to get their offensive lines right. I get that it's really hard to get the offensive line right, but it's a coaching thing. It's not really a quarterback thing. And then if you just watch the game, the offense doesn't look or feel right at all. Like you can watch these guys and then you can watch another high powered potent offense. It just looks a lot better and it looks right. This doesn't look right or feel right at all. And I don't know if this will be able to be fixed in time to save Caleb Williams, but hopefully it will. So me personally, I'm going to speak for myself right now. Once again, take this advice for what you will, but I will be buying the heavy Caleb Williams discount. I mean, it's already begun to a certain extent. I got a SP Authentic Upper Deck PSA 10 pop, not many. It's a very tough card to get a 10 on, on PWCC for like $150. So I'm going to just be buying off these cards whenever I can. And I'm not sure how low all of the Caleb Williams stuff does go. I recently flipped one of the wild card 101 PSA 10 cards that I paid $600 for, got $1,500 for it. So I'm not really sure how low his stuff's going to go. This was at the beginning, I think after the first game of his recent downward slide. So here's the plans for selling and making money on Caleb Williams. You guys need to really pay attention to this segment right here. The first thing I want to cover is it's crazy. Barstool Sports is some of the only real journalism out there. They basically said that if any quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, all the way on down to all the rookies this year, went to Chicago, they would be ruined and facing the exact same position that Caleb Williams is facing. All it comes down to in the NFL and the league is coaching, schemes, this, that, and the other. That's why Brock Purdy even has a job right now and you can go on down the line. There's a bunch of other players that would be literally nothing without the right coach. So there's three different outcomes for Caleb here though. If they keep Matt Eberflus or they make the wrong hire at head coach, I would say sell all of his cards before the season. There probably won't be much profit to be made. By hiring the wrong coach, I mean hiring like a Brian Flores or some other defensive coordinator. He's the only one that comes to mind because defensive coaches are not the way right now. Number two would be a mediocre proven hire. So if they go get like a 
John Gruden, Bill Belichick, Mike Vrabel, some names that come to mind. You still want to sell before the season. You will get more money if they get a Bill Belichick as opposed to keeping Matt Eberflus or the wrong hire. But it's going to be a mess still just because these guys can't coach offense. They aren't new. They aren't progressive. They aren't Kevin O'Connell. They aren't Sean McVay. They aren't this, that, and the other guys that Caleb Williams needs. And then the last option, hopefully, I'm praying Chicago can once again get it right. I'm really praying that they can do it right for once. I mean, the Chargers finally went out and hired a good coach, which I never thought would happen. And look at what they're doing right now. So I'm praying that Chicago can do it at least one time. But if they do make a good hire and get, say, a Ben Johnson, I think Cliff Kingsbury goes into the good hire department right now. You would want to hold all of the cheap ones. So all the ones that I'm paying $150 for or ones that you graded and aren't that much. Good quality cards, guys. I'm not talking stuff like, the trillion leaf USC autos that are out there and you know other unsigned USC card stuff, but I'm talking really good cards, a lot of them that are yet to come out with. You would wanna hold those type of cards and then once he has a resurgence like Jared Goff, like Trevor Lawrence, first few weeks of the season or playoffs next year would be my guess, would be the best selling windows and then you can actually make some real money. If he does end up busting out, it will go down as him being ruined by Chicago. I mean, you guys can see based on the eye test and if you can't, you're just literally lying to yourself or not watching. But Justin Fields, Mitch Trubisky, they never had a three game stretch for Chicago like Caleb Williams did recently. He was throwing the ball well. Chicago has never had a quarterback do something like that in that stretch. His stats are still pretty good. We'll see how it ends up. I'm curious to hear all of your guys' thoughts. I'll see you all next time.